Components of the patient's hygiene. Care of the skin. When a person's physical condition changes, the skin often reflects this by alterations in color, thickness, texture, turgor, temperature, and hydration. As long as the skin remains intact and healthy, its physiological function remains optimal. Intact skin is the first line of defense against infection by invasion of pathogenic organisms. Data collection. Determine the condition of the patient's skin by observing its color, texture, thickness, turgor, temperature, and hydration. Be certain to use ample lighting. Natural or halogen lighting is suggested. Normal skin has the following characteristics. Good turgor. It's elastic and firm. Generally smooth and soft. Intact without abrasions. Localized changes in texture across surface. Skin color variations from body part to body part, warm and moist. Pressure ulcers and pressure injuries. The National Pressure Ulcer Advisory Panel, NPUAP, has announced that the term pressure injury will be used to replace the former term pressure ulcer in the staging system. The NPUAP has determined that the term pressure injury more accurately describes injuries to intact and ulcerated skin, especially because stage one previously was referred to as a pressure injury and the remaining stages were referred to as ulcers. The numbering system also was changed to Arabic numbers. The patient problem of compromised skin integrity, either actual or risk for, is a common diagnosis for any patient in a healthcare facility. Prevention and treatment of skin impairment is one of the nurse's highest priorities of care. Prevention is the ultimate goal, but when this is not possible, good nursing intervention can result in, one, optimal healing of the impaired skin without complications, two, a decrease in patient's discomfort, three, a decrease in length of stay in the facility if a discharge is planned, and four, a decrease in the cost of ongoing care. Approximately 2.5 million hospitalized patients develop pressure injuries each year despite national guidelines regarding their prevention and treatment. The incidence of pressure injuries in acute care facilities is detrimental to the health of patients. The development of pressure injuries lead to longer hospital stays, resulting in increased chance of not only infection to the pressure injury, but also other infections related to the extended stay to in the facility. To encourage acute care facilities to become more aggressive in the prevention of pressure injury development, as of October 2008, the Centers of Medicare and Medicaid stopped covering the cost of treatment of pressure injuries that developed during a patient's hospitalization. The goal is to prevent patients from experiencing pain, loss of function, complications such as infection, prolonged hospital stays, and the increased costs associated with the development of pressure injuries. The same is true for long-term care facilities. Pressure injuries can occur when sufficient pressure on the skin causes the blood vessels in the area to collapse. The flow of blood and fluid to the cells is impaired, resulting in ischemia or lack of oxygen and nutrients to the cells. When the external pressure against the skin is greater than the pressure in the capillary bed, a network of capillaries, blood flow decreases to the adjacent tissue. If the pressure continues without relief for more than two hours, cells in the involved layers of skin tend to undergo, undergo necrosis, uh, death of tissue. Pressure is usually most severe over bony prominences like the sacrum, scapulae, ears, elbows, heels, inner and outer malleoli, inner and outer knees, back of the head, ischial tuberosities, trochanteric areas of the hips and heels. In addition to the unrelieved pressure, two mechanical factors play a common role in the development of pressure injuries. The first is shearing force. This occurs when the tissue layers of skin slide on each other, causing subcutaneous blood vessels to kink or stretch, resulting in interruption of blood flow to the skin. The second mechanical factor is friction. The rubbing of skin against another surface provides produces friction, which may remove layers of the tissue. This may occur when moving patients in the bed by sliding them across the bed linen, when improperly lifting patients, and when improperly placed in bed pans. The appearance of pressure injuries is a major manifestation of impaired skin integrity. A patient who stays in one position without relief of pressure, especially over bony prominences, is at risk for development of a pressure injury. Patients especially at risk are chronically ill, debilitated, older, disabled, and incontinent, and those with uh, spinal cord injuries, limited mobility, circulatory impairment, or poor overall nutrition. Those who are incontinent are at risk because continual contact 
of the skin with urine and feces often cause chemical irritation, which frequently leads to impaired skin integrity. Nutritional factors play a role for those who are overweight and those who are underweight. Obesity increases the risk because fat tissue has less vascularity and re resilience, and the added bulk and weight increase the pressure on bony prominences. Obesity also causes increased skin and skin on skin contact, especially in skin folds. Being underweight increases the risk because of a lack of cushion over the bones and muscles and lack of nutrition to the skin cells. In addition, any condition that results in a decreased supply of oxygen and nutrients to the cells, such as anemia, arteriosclerosis, or edema, swelling, increases the risk of skin impairment because the cells are not adequately nourished. Patients who are at increased risk for any reason need careful ongoing assessment and a plan of care aimed at preventing skin impairment. Definition and staging. The definition of a pressure injury was revised by the NPUAP in 2016. The NPUAP also added definitions to the six category staging system for pressure injuries. These definitions are for deep tissue injury, medical device pressure related injury, and mucosal membrane pressure injury. The NPUAP defines a pressure injury as localized damage to the skin in or underlying soft tissue, usually over a bony prominence or related to a medical or other device. The injury can present as intact skin or an open ulcer and may be painful. The injury occurs as a result of intense and or prolonged pressure or pressure in combination with shirt. The tolerance of soft tissue for pressure and shear may also be affected by microclimate, nutrition, perfusion, comorbidities, and condition of the soft tissue. Assess any reports from the UAP regarding potential or actual skin integrity issues. If reddened areas are found, assess the area by noting any blanching of the area. By by gently pressing on the reddened area with the glove finger. If the area does not blanch when pressure is applied, injury to the tissue is likely. Document and report such findings to the healthcare provider. If actual skin impairment has occurred already, measure and document the area according to facility protocol and report the findings to a healthcare provider. The following sections summarize the revised stages of pressure injury development during, according to the NPUAP 2016. Additional information regarding pressure injuries can be found at www.npuap.org. Stage 1. A stage 1 pressure injury is a localized area of skin, typically over a bony prominence, that is intact with non-blanchable redness. Skin with darker tones may not have visible blanching, but its color is likely to differ from the surrounding area. The wound characteristics vary. Areas may be painful, firm, soft, warm, or cool compared with adjacent tissue. This stage is typically difficult to detect in patients with dark skin tones. Stage two. A stage two pressure injury involves partial thickness loss of dermis. It appears as a shallow open injury, usually shiny or dry, with a red pink wound bed without slough or bruising. Bruising raises the suspicion of deep tissue injury. Some stage two injuries manifest as intact or open, ruptured, serum filled blisters. Do not use the term stage two to describe skin tears, tape burns, perineal dermatitis, maceration, or excoriation. Stage three. A stage three pressure injury involves full thickness tissue loss in which subcutaneous fat is sometimes visible, but bone, tendon, and muscle are not exposed. If slough is present, it does not obscure the depth of tissue loss. Possible features are undermining and tunneling. The depth of a stage three pressure injury varies depending on its anatomic location. On the bridge of the nose, the ear, the occiput, and the malleolus, which lack subcutaneous tissue, these injuries are shallow. Extremely deep stage 3 pressure injuries develop in areas with significant layers of deep adipose tissue. Stage 4. A stage 4 pressure injury involves full thickness loss with exposed bone, tendon, cartilage, or muscle. Sometimes slough or eschar is present on some parts of the wound bed. The injury often includes undermining or tunneling. As with stage three pressure injuries, stage four pressure injuries vary in depth depending on their location because these injuries extend into muscle and supported structures. The patient is at risk for osteomyelitis. Unstageable or unclassified. An unstageable pressure injury